Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Today we are going to talk about drugs that will act on the posterior pituitary gland. And also we'll talk about the hormones, okay? Which are released from the posterior pituitary gland. Oneva, I need to remind you that you have to send me the attendance, all right? By the end of the class. Because these uh, the tendons would carry marks in the final. Okay, so we talked about already the anterior pituitary gland, and then we talked about what are the hormones that it releases, what is the effect in all. And now we will talk about the posterior pituitary gland, okay? And then we'll talk about the hormones that it will produce, that is oxytocin and then vasopressin, okay? So today we'll talk about these two. Oxytocin and vasopressin. All right. Uh, vasopressin is also called ADH, that is antidiuretic hormone. All right. Okay. So let's talk about the structure. So ADH is a nine hormone, oh, sorry, nine amino acid peptide synthesized in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary. ADH is released in response to increasing plasma osmolarity. Or a fall, a fall in the blood pressure. Yeah, okay. Now, what is its action? You see, the action of ADH are mediated by three types of specific receptors. You see, that is V V1A, V1B, V2. All right. Now, this V1A and V2, these are located at smooth muscle, myometrium kidney, PNS, and adrenal medulla. However, this V2, it's very important that you remember, V2 is located at the renal tubules. So V1 are coupled to increase inositide uh, turnover and increase intracellular calcium, and V2 are coupled to an increase in TMP. All right, let's talk about it. So you see here, <coughs> I was talking about V1, uh, V1 receptor. You see, it is doing what? It is activating the diacylglycerol and then as a result, protein kinase. And then as a result, the protein is phosphorylated and all. Okay. And the second important mechanism it does is it will increase the calcium. All right. So you see here coupled to increased intracellular calcium, this V1, all right? We just talked about it, that V1 is coupled to it. You see it in myocytes, you see it in adrenal gland, and then you see it in platelet aggregation. It's very important that you do remember where is it, okay? Because you see, when we'll talk about the drugs, so the drug which is going to affect V1 will definitely enhance uh, the platelet aggregation will enhance the ACTH release and all that, right? Along with the action of vasopressin. All right. Uh, then where is V2? If you remember, we just talked about it, that V2 is present in renal tubules, okay? And it increases the CMP. So let's talk about it. What is it? You see, V2, all right, it activates... The GPCR, it goes to adenyl cyclase. It's an enzyme which is located within the membrane. It, it starts to convert ADPs into CMP. And then as a result, positive effect will be produced. When you see AQV, uh, WVC, this is actually the uh, receptor. All right. So these aqua receptors would actually start to be produced here. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have seen my videos uh, in the receptor playlist or not yet, but then uh, I talked once about the mechanism of receptors, okay? That sometimes the receptors are there within the cell, and when these receptors are activated, then they start to get near to the uh, cell, uh, cell membrane. And that's how they start to work, okay? There was a specific word that is squitter, squit, squistered, all right? 
so what happens is when the receptors sometimes the receptors okay they they do endocytosis okay and when there is endocytosis when let's say on the uh, cell membrane okay a lot of receptor activity is going on so sometimes a negative uh, effect is being produced all right and then the receptors start to get inside the cell by the process of endocytosis literally the entire receptor get endocytosed okay so this is how it keeps on happening okay so as a when cmp will be produced then uh, uh, this uh, pka would be produced and this would produce positive effect on the exocytosis of this component and as a result aqua receptors would be produced you see this aqt oh, sorry aq2 receptor okay they are present on the epical membrane and the basolateral membrane all right okay so what is the job of aq2 the job of aq2 is that you see in the urine a lot of water would be produced when uh the drug which affects on the uh, which binds to the v2 receptor so then what happens the water molecules get inside the cell okay so if you look over here this is the overall compiled image of these receptors that v2 receptor it will produce a stimulatory effect increase the cmp protein kinase a produce the aqua channel you see channel insertion and as a result water molecules will get inside okay here v1 a and b receptors they would go and as a result the final effect is on the calcium okay that the calcium is getting absorbed just imagine when the cal calcium is getting decreased in amount so it will produce vasodilation or vasoconstriction hmm i want you to tell, tell me in the chat box that when the calcium amount will decrease yeah very good afifa is right it will actually produce vasodilation okay all right so what are the actions of vasopressin which is anti diuretic hormone so in renal tubules adh causes the permeability of water to increase because of the insertion of water channels composed of the protein aqua porin 2 into the apical and basolateral membrane adh also increases transport of urea in inner uh, medullary collecting duct which increases the urine concentrating ability of the kidney okay so as a result what will uh, increase the permeability of water will increase okay and then you see a lot of urine would be produced so adh causes vasoconstriction at a higher dose it also stimulates coagulation factor 8 and non willebrand factor <coughs> sorry so these two factors okay this co coagulation factor 8 and non willebrand factor these two are the components which are there in the blood and then they are activated uh whenever they are activated so basically blood coagulation happens okay so now you can imagine if some day vasopressin okay will be taken in in uh, at a higher dose okay so it will produce a lot of these two components okay and as a result a lot of blood coagulation will happen right okay it can be bad right it can actually block your blood vessels okay then we have pharmacological properties of adh preparation so aqueous vasopressin a short acting preparation acts on both v1 and v2 receptor and it is administered parenterally and lasts for 2 to 6 hours then we have <coughs> sorry then we have desmopressin acetate it's a longer acting drug 10 to 20, 20 hour preparation administered intranasally parenterally or orally 
Then you have therapeutic uses. Okay, so desmopressin is the most effective treatment for severe diabetes insipidus because V2 activity is 3,000 times greater than its V1 activity. But it is not effective in nephrogenic form of disease. Okay. All right, so you see everybody, as we have discussed earlier, that vasopressin is actually doing what? It is maintaining the water level, right? In your body. And it is decreasing water excretion by the kidneys. All right, this is one thing you need to know. Um, <coughs> sorry, guys. That it is decreasing uh, water excretion by the <clears throat> kidneys, okay? So the, just imagine this desmopressin Desmopressin, okay, it is the water excreter, okay? All right, so uh, it's the most effective treatment of the severe diabetes insipidus because its V2 activity is 3,000 times more greater, okay? So you see water is getting back in the cell, okay? And the outflow is decreased, right? The excretion is decreased. So what is diabetes insipidus? So there are two types of diabetes we talked. One is diabetes mellitus and another one is diabetes insipidus. So diabetes insipidus is actually related to uh, a lot of thirst, okay? And the urinary, urination is actually more, okay? And it is, actually, it is also for those people, it is, uh, okay. And it is also used for those people who, let's say, uh, have tendency to urinate at night. Okay, we'll talk about it later on in the lecture as well. So <coughs> there are two types of <coughs> Awesome, please give me water. Okay, there are two types of uh, diabetes insipidus. One is the central type, which is neurogenic, and the other one is nephrogenic. Okay, now if you look here on my slide, I have actually uh, written in the bold form that <coughs> sorry. It is not effective in nephrogenic form of the disease. Yes. But right now, this diabetes insipidus, we are, it is more uh, for diabetes insipidus. See, there are two types. Diabetes mellitus is more towards, we talk about the insulin and all. Okay. Right now, we are talking about the diabetes insipidus. Okay. So here, it's about the uh, urination and all. Okay. So your question could be <coughs> that why exactly uh, the person who have nephrogenic type cannot get benefited by the desmopressin, okay? So your reason is that nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is due to inability of kidney to respond normally to vasopressin, all right? So just imagine a molecule is coming, okay? It is giving instruction that, hey, kidney, it stops excreting a lot of water, okay? but the cells just don't listen to it, okay? So this is the type when the kidney is actually ignoring the molecule vasopressin. Now the other one is neurogenic, okay? And the neurogenic one is actually due to lack of, okay, leave it. Okay, so it is actually due to lack of vasopressin production in the brain. Remember, we talked in the earlier part of the lesson that this is actually uh, produced in hypothalamus, okay, and then released in the posterior pituitary gland, okay? All right, so vasopressin is included in the advanced cardiac life support protocol as a substitute for epinephrine. Why? Because here we talked that this will produce effect on adrenal gland. Okay, and adrenal gland produces what? Adrenal gland produces adrenaline, okay, epinephrine. So you see, as a substitute for epinephrine in cardiac arrest with acetol, it has been useful in treating some types of GI bleeding. Why GI bleeding? Again, if I go back to the slide, and if you remember, we talked that it will increase the coagulation factor and 
Willy Brand factor, right? One Willy Brand factor. So you see, because of these, coagulation will happen more, right? So we can actually wait. Where is it here? So you can actually control the internal bleeding by giving this medicine, okay? Because then the coagulation would happen faster. And bleeding caused by colonic diverticula, uh, but this use is no longer approved because of the other side effects. Desperpressin is useful in nocturnal um, aneurysis by reducing nighttime urine production. So nocturnal aneurysis is actually uh, urinating while somebody is sleeping at night. Okay. All right. So what are the adverse effects of ADH? Adverse effects is headache, nausea, cramps, constriction of coronary arteries. Okay. And when I'll ask you in the exam, what are the adverse effects? You will not write nausea. Okay. Uh, you can write other symptoms because nausea is one global symptom of every, uh, you know, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So I don't want you to write that, okay? I want you to write other side effects which are more prominent. If you write nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, I'll give you straight zero even if it's true. Okay. Then you have ADH antagonist. So you see, the weptins. It means it's a class, okay? So the weptins are non-peptide antagonists of vasopressin receptor. So these, if the earlier one was reducing the amount of water in the urine, so this one actually will increase the water, right? Increase the excretion of water from the body, okay? Okay, <laughs> so now the first one is uh, coniveptin, okay? It blocks V1A and V2 receptors. It is administered IV and is approved for the use of hypervolumic and euvolumic hyponatremia in SIADH. It's a syndrome, okay? Syndrome of inappropriate ADH and as an adjunct for diuretic therapy in congestive heart failure. Now, let's talk about it even more, okay? Wait. First of all, let's talk about SIADH. What is that? So SIADH, like I said before, that it is syndrome of um, antidiuretic hormone. Okay. So it's a condition in which body makes too much of the antidiuretic hormone. Okay. All right. As a result, you see here, very important thing, that the urine will not be excreted more. Okay. And dehydration will be very less, okay? And hypernitremia, okay, it will be positive. It means it will be a lot more, okay? So this is a condition in which you want the water to be released from the body. And other thing was congestive heart failure. Why exactly we are worried about congestive heart failure? Because now we want to reduce the load on the heart, okay? And how would we do that? When we'll uh, reduce amount of water in the blood, okay? So we can actually decrease the blood volume, okay? All right, so the oral tolweptin is specific for V2 receptors and is approved for the same indication. Okay, so the drug interaction called fibrate increases secretion of ADH from the pituitary and can be used to treat mild forms of diabetes insipidus. Chlorpromide and TCA increase sensitivity of the tubular cells to ADH. Okay, then we have lithium ions and dembic chlorocycline inhibit action of ADH. It is um, used more often than lithium ions because of fewer side effects, but use of either of these drugs and SIADH has been replaced with a specific vaptin. Now, the other class of this drug, that is oxytocin. Okay, so the structure, 9 amino acid peptide synthesized in hypothalamus and secreted in posterior pituitary. Oxytocin differs from ADH by only two amino acids. Okay, so what is its 
action and pharmacological properties elicits milk ejection from the breast stimulates contraction of uterine smooth muscle oxytocin has been associated with parental mating and social behaviors is infused iv administered intramuscularly or delivered intranasally the half life is 5 to 10 minutes therapeutic use it is used in the induction and maintenance of labor stimulates milk ejection from the breast is sometimes used to control postpartum uterine bleeding more readily controlled with ergotic alkaloids adverse effects are oxytocin can produce hypertension and water intoxication now what is water intoxication water intoxication is when you actually consume a lot of water okay and this is over hydration okay and this actually <coughs> then would produce toxic effects all right yes water produces positive effects but but when it's taken in overdose in high amounts so it can produce water intoxication okay so oxytocin can produce both of these conditions okay it can uh, make the person uh, drink a lot of water and it can actually produce hypertension as well oxytocin can cause uterine rupture and should not be used after uterine surgery because you see the muscles will contract okay so it can rupture or if signs of fetal distress are present just imagine the fetal fetus is already in the distress state and you are contracting the uh, uterine wall just imagine what a failure it could be all right everybody thank you so much that is all for today